pandemic has been tough for people living with depression and the darkness of winter coupled with stressful news cycles can add to that burden. I'm Veronica Rickert, this is Badger Talks. Today we're talking about how the pandemic has affected people with depression and what we can do to help ourselves and others. Shanda Wells is with us. She's a clinical psychologist at UW Health. Shanda, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, what do we know so far about how the pandemic has affected rates of depression? Yeah, you know, I think it's a little early to have the total view, but we have noticed, at least in my uh, in my team who works in primary care, a definite increase in need for our services. And we typically see patients who have depression or anxiety. So I do think that we are seeing quite an uptick in the need for folks to talk about their depression. And tell me a little bit more about what groups seem to be having the toughest time. Are you seeing particular patterns? Yeah, I think that, you know, there are some people who in a strange way, the pandemic might actually have been a little bit helpful for their mental health. Um, But there's also a large group of folks that are really struggling. Um, Those might be people who typically, you know, suffer from seasonal affect disorder and being inside a lot um, due to the virtual world we're living in now and with the darkness are really struggling. Um, or people who might have had existing depression symptoms and really coped with social outlets by you know engaging with people socially and then they're not really able to do that in the same way anymore. Uh, I also see in my practice a lot of teenagers really struggling. You know, their normal lives of school and you know fostering relationships with their friends has been pretty significantly interrupted in most communities. And so they're having a pretty tough time too. Right. I'm seeing that in my home life. I've got two kids. One of them's a teenager and the teenager is by far having the tougher time. So for people, whether it's teenagers or other folks who are suffering from that isolation you're talking about, are there things even within the parameters of the pandemic that you're suggesting that they can do to try to feel better? Absolutely. I think, you know, even though it's cold and dark out, we're definitely recommending getting outside. Um, You know, lots of research will show that even, you know, moderate amounts of physical activity or connection with nature can be very helpful for the mood. You know, Uh, we've also talked a lot with people about how we can think creatively about social engagement. Um, You know, it doesn't have to be face to face. Um, or going out to dinner, you know, maybe it can be Zoom calls, you know, people have gotten really creative with online gaming platforms. (laughs) I think there's a lot of different ways that people can safely engage without being in the same room together. And what about people who are trundling along, they're getting stuff done, but they just don't feel good? Are there warning signs that we should be looking for in ourselves and for other people that maybe this is a little more serious than we think it is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will often talk to people about that feeling of hopelessness. You know, if we really start to feel like things are just never going to get any better and there's no way to come out of this, that's really a, a red flag for me. That would tell me that something's bad enough that we might need to reach out and get some help. Or just if your day to day functioning is being affected, you know, if the things you normally love to do aren't that enjoyable anymore, or if you you can't really get the things done you normally get done, Um, or, you know, if relationships are being compromised. And you mentioned nature earlier, that connection, getting out of doors, Zoom calls. Are there other things at the top of your list that we can look to if we're not feeling great? Yeah, you know, on my team, we often talk with patients about engaging in meaningful activities. Uh, And so I think finding something that is meaningful to you and gives you joy personally is a really important task during these times, especially. So we'll often talk with people about what is something you really care about or something that really gives you joy? And have you been meaningfully engaging in those kinds of activities lately? And that can be any sort of thing, depending on the person. Um, But it's really easy when we're feeling down or depressed or stressed out to kind of ignore those things. And then we really do have a lack of joy in our lives in addition to the stress. Um, And so re-engaging with those things can really help us feel better. 
Thank you. Those are all really helpful. And if we're listening to you now thinking maybe it is time for me to get help, what do you suggest? How can we reach out? Yeah, so I am part of a primary care team, so I always recommend reaching out to your primary care provider. They can help you get in touch with someone who might be helpful. Or there are national hotlines and a county hotline that you can call. There's the national hotline, which is 1-800-273-8255 if you're feeling really down. Or we also have the Dane County Crisis Line, which is 608-280-2600. And they can help if you're feeling like you are in crisis and you need immediate help. Thank you so much for talking today. This was really helpful. Appreciate it. Thank you. If you have questions for us or topic suggestions or want to comment on this Badger Talk, send us an email at covid19update at uc.wisc.edu. And for more information, you can go to covid19.impact.wisc.edu. This is Badger Talks.